You are now listening to the Ron Paul Radio Network. Radio for the revolution. Yo, what's going on, y'all? You're back. I'm your host, Paco, and you're listening to Occupy the Media. I want to thank you if you're tuning in. So before the break, we were talking about the clip from News Channel 4. You know, Romney supporters punching Ron Paul supporters. Uh, they, they need to chill out with that because some of us might not react correctly like Ron Paul would. Uh, but did you guys hear that Santorum pretty much dissing Ron Paul, taking shots at Ron Paul? He sent an email out. This was out on, Mar- on May 12th on PolicyMike.com. Romney's campaign has convinced a former member of the Santorum campaign team to round up Santorum supporters for Mitt Romney and to make sure they attend this week in state convention, a task Romney's campaign has so far not been very good at. David Van, Rick Santorum's Oklahoma State coordinator, sent out an email May 9th to Oklahoma Republicans attempting to get them to turn out in opposition to Ron Paul and therefore presumably for Mitt Romney, the only other candidate in the race. The note was apparently sent from an email address owned by the suspended Santorum campaign. Uh, the vitriolic note from the Santorum campaign stated, quote, It's time for all values voters to work together to keep our community safe for the next generation. Several Ron Paul activists want to legalize recreational drug use, decimate obscenity laws, and sanction prostitution. In the note, Santorum's campaign theorized that this weekend's Oklahoma Republican convention might get nasty. There will surely be a passionate struggle for control of the convention, the national delegation, and the party's future. In the note, the Santorum campaign acknowledges the media blackout of Ron Paul's delicate success, stating, This Saturday, in Norman, Oklahoma, Ron Paul's people intend to complete their grand design and add Oklahoma to the growing list of state delegations they already control. The national media is largely ignoring the recent developments in many state and district conventions. And I wonder why. You see, they know, Romney and Santorum know why Ron Paul's being shut out. They know better than to say his name. That's why I go and tell me, when when have you ever heard Obama say the the name Ron Paul? I'll tell you, he said it once. He said it one time. He mentioned Ron Paul's name. They don't say his name. They don't speak about him. Candidates ignore him just like the media ignores him. And here goes Santorum, people admitting it. Because the people they're talking to don't know about the Ron Paul setup. They don't know about us doing this because they only watch TV and the TV ain't telling them what we're doing. So Santorum got to let them know. It's really going down. You got to get out there. So uh, he's a clown, man. Well, I knew he was going to endorse Mitt Romney. It's such a joke. Uh, he's so far from a conservative. Now, there's this uh, thing out that says... There's basically two way, or five possible ways or five possible outcomes that can happen out of this Oklahoma situation. And this was put, posted, uh, I think it was on, yeah, on Daily Paul. So I'm trying to pull it up for you guys now if my computer want to start acting right. So just bear with me there. So basically because we don't have, I don't think we have it exactly a hundred percent for sure that we're going to get counted for Oklahoma. We don't know what's going to happen, what the RNC is going to try to pull. You know, they can say whatever they want, but we got video proof. We got evidence at every convention of what's happening, man. And it's cheating going on all over the place. Okay, so let's see here. This was posted on Daily Paul from Join Mo, Joe O-E-I-N-M-O. Here is how this will work. Each delegation will present itself to the national convention. Delegation A will include nine delegates from the district conventions and 25 from those chosen from the parking lot. Delegation B will include three delegates from the conventions and 25 de- delegates chosen from the convention taken without a vote on the roll call in the incorrect and blatant disregard of the rules and will of the convention floor on enjoyment that was caught on tape. Both delegations will be challenged by the other. One congressional district is separately being challenged, and I would not include in either delegation which could cause a negative if it fails to get seated. 
At the convention, it could be decided in five different scenarios. One, the convention challenge committee finds that Delegation A followed the rules and provided sufficient proof to prove that the Oklahoma Republican convention was never ended and therefore the convention held in the parking lot was legal. All 34 delegates from Delegation A will be seated along with three congressional delegates from Delegation B. Now, second scenario. The Convention Challenge Committee finds that Delegation B followed the rules at the Oklahoma State uh, Convention and did end the convention properly and followed the rules and awards all 28 delegates from Delegation B plus 9 from the Congressional District Conventions from Delegation A. Okay, now number 3. The Convention Challenge Committee seats neither delegation but rather leaves it up to the body of the convention to decide the outcome. All you stealth candidates get to vote. And then uh, the, the fourth possibility, the convention challenge committee could throw out the at-large delegates from both conventions and just seat the congressional district delegates. Second most likely scenario. And number six, added by Andrew Jetton, Romney and Paul will come to an agreement before the convention because Romney wants to avoid floor fights. All decisions by the uh, National Convention Committee and the Credentials Committee can be challenged and overruled by members of the convention body on the floor of the National Convention. That means it's going to get ugly. <laughs> we are not going to let them take it over, and they're not going to just let us come and take it over, neither, unfortunately. Uh, and we got this, this uh, article here, Chaos at the Arizona GOP Convention. This was posted by someone. When I, uh, Let me... Uh, pull this one up see if we can get through this before the break let's see Ron Paul supporters were clearly loath and not welcome to the event which was held at the Grand Canyon University Arena so we're talking about Arizona speaker after speaker told the crowd that we had to unite behind Mitt Romney we were told that no Ron Paul signs were allowed inside the convention and yet a large Romney banner hung above the convention floor the first major mishap of the morning was when the AZ GOP read the credentialing report. They reported that Coconino County only had 12 delegates showed up. We had 19, and overvote would, ha would have thrown out county results out completely. That would have been a disaster since 11 of our 19 delegates were Ron Paul delegates. Our county chair stood up and yelled the correct number, and the GOP took her word for it without ever questioning or knowing who she was. She could have said 30. She could have said 3, and they would have believed her. Throughout the convention, the GOP chair kept trying to change the order of business. At one point, we were told to break off into our respective congressional districts located through the arena and even outside. Then we were all called back to the main delegate floor because procedural rules had been broken. How many rules are going to be broken? Every convention. When we were finally able to break into our congressional districts to vote, we found Romney supporters breaking the rules by placing copies of Romney's slate on every chair. I overheard one of the girls who was placing the slate on the chairs say that if anybody asked, tell them that people left the slate there when they were called back to the main floor. Once voting started, we were not allowed to leave our congressional district. The Flagstaff group was in CD1, which compromised of around 150 delegates. We had to vote for an A and B delegate, two separate ballots. On the first ballot, the Ron Paul delegate was Jill uh, Scafell. The vote was taken, and about 30 minutes later, the results came back. It was reported that Jill had only received 15 votes. We knew for a fact that she had received at least 11 votes from Coconino County alone. The place went crazy and someone called for a show of hands. My wife Cindy was chosen to count the hands. And as soon as the hands went up, you could hear Romney delegates gasp. Hands were raised everywhere. A total of 51 people had voted for Jill Scafell, the Ron Paul supporter. More shenanigans, so we'll be back after the break. I'm your host, Paco. You're listening to Occupy the Media. This national poll shows that Ron Paul is the best candidate that stacks up against Obama. Well, Ron Paul wants to take away my social security, so I don't like him. He's actually the only candidate that has a real plan to save your social security. Not only save it, but save the purchasing power of your monthly check. Prices have been going up a lot lately. We need to make cuts. Bring our troops home to protect our own shores and borders and rebuild our economy. 